Hey our vacationers, I hope this video finds you well and in a safe place away from the coronavirus. This was filmed before all the shutdowns and stay at home orders were issued. We were in Mobile at Shady Acres RV Park and we were centrally located between Gulf Shores and uh, the Dolphin Island area. So today we went down to the Dolphin Island area and saw the estuarium and we didn't even know what that word meant until we got there. The uh, estuarium on Dolphin Island is a part of the uh, Dolphin Island Sea Lab and the estuarium technically means it's the wide part of the river where that it reaches the sea and the freshwater and saltwater mix. So the uh, natural habitats of that area is diverse, meaning some of it is saltwater and some of it is freshwater. Uh, but in this particular area, the Mobile Tensaw River Delta and the Mobile Bay and the Barrier Islands and the northern Gulf of Mexico come together to make this mixture of uh, sea and uh, freshwater wildlife and it's pretty interesting we went in the uh, sea lab to see what it had to offer and uh, had a lot of wildlife alligators turtles uh, fish of various uh, sorts there was people there that would uh, answer your questions they were very knowledgeable about the area and the sea life and the plants and we also walked around on the outside they had some boardwalks to walk around on and we actually saw quite a few dolphins and every time we would see one we'd turn the camera to try to find it and it would already be back under the water so sorry about that I think in this footage you'll actually see one dolphin but we hope you enjoy this video and if you do give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel that helps us a lot and hit the notification bell for future releases that we have coming up get the little turtles going up the tree stump and then on the little log <laughs> Sad we have to have graphs and charts and exhibits of the kind of trash that's picked up out of the ocean waters. While we were in Mobile, we had gone to the estuarium and uh, we figured out that there was a fort across the street. So we decided to walk over to the fort and check it out. This uh, fort was best known for the Battle of Mobile. It's one of the best preserved Civil War masonry forts in the nation. It's been on the been added to the top 11 most endangered historic sites due to erosion and ocean encroachment. It loses about 10 feet per year that falls off into the ocean and it was not very far from the water as it was. Uh, the fort had the original canyons that were there when the fort was built. It still has a little blacksmith shop, a uh, kitchen that they would cook in. It has a museum and a gift shop, and there's tunnels running all under it. The so guys had to go down and check out the tunnel. I was not real tickled about going down in the tunnels myself.
This is in the underbelly of the fort. So apparently this is where the powder was kept dry and men would come and stay warm and stay out of the action. And the brick, look how the brick is tapered right here. So you can get your fire arm out and shoot anybody coming this way. Pretty amazing. We got a walk out here that has a ramp. It's filled with sand up that way. And there's the ramp going out to the outside. I'm gonna see if I can make it back up the steps. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,000 steps here, I think. There he is, he made it. <laughs> you can see here the damage to the wall from the USS Chickasaw. The Chickasaw was built for the United States Navy during the American Civil War. The ship participated in the Battle of Mobile Bay in August of 1864. The Chickasaw fired 25 shots at Fort Gaines and it itself was struck on her smokestack. On the 6th of August, the ship bombarded Fort Gaines for two hours in support of troops encircling and blockading the fort. We knew we wanted to go see Fort Gaines, but we didn't realize there was an admission fee to go in. But I'm glad we decided to pay the fee, even though we had an hour left in the day. It was $6 a person for adults to go in and through the gift shop. But then once you're in the uh, fort itself, uh, it's pretty impressive what all you see, how the people lived back in those days and how the fort operated and how the cannons worked and how they could rotate the cannons. And there's just a lot more to be seen once you go in and it made it worthwhile. Uh, so the trip was, was well worth the $6 each that we paid to go in. I uh, just wish we would have had a little longer time during the day uh, to enjoy that area. Yeah. Built, a, built a brick, it provides access to the Terraflin or gun platform for both soldiers and ammunition carts. To the left, the kitchen and courtyard can be seen. Oh, okay. This is one. Since we didn't have time to really record and see everything we wanted to see in that one hour that we had before they closed, I wanted to go through the map that we got when we paid to go in and the points of interest are marked at each post. So go through uh, the south gun ramp was built of brick. It provides access to the terraplan or gun platform for both soldiers and ammunition carts. Items two, three, and four show where the cannons were mounted and they had little tracks that they could be turned and change their field of fire. The highlights for item five through nine, which are the bay facing areas of the fort. The most interesting point to me was the disappearing gun, which the recoil of the firing would push the gun back and down where it could be reloaded again. And then they would position it where it could be fired again and repeat the cycle. Just to give you an idea how advanced this fort was, the areas shown here, Northeast Bastion had a hot shot furnace where cannonballs were heated red hot, fired at the ship, so if they hit the ship, it would set the ship on fire. Also, the latrine area was 
pretty crude, but it was built with a tunnel so the tide would come in and come out and wash the uh, waste away. So it was self-maintained by the ocean tides. Here's the map of each numbered location for you to stop and read the brochure that comes with your entrance fee. And then when we got done with the tour of the fort, we went out to eat. We had fish, shrimp po' boys, and a lot of other good food at the original Oyster House at Mobile. We hope you've enjoyed coming along with us to the Estuarium and the Fort Gaines tour. We hope you've had a good time with us and maybe this will inspire you to come to this area and visit all the wonderful things for yourself. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you'll be notified with each new video that we put out. It would help us a lot and we really would love to have comments on your favorite place to go and maybe if you've been here before what you thought about the area yourself. Thanks. See you soon.